Hey you, I'm Andy Powell. Welcome to the AllCast Podcast. No topic is off the table. I hope you enjoy. Today's episode is with Russell J. Gould. Russell makes some incredible claims that sound fantastic in good ways and in questionable ways. But every once in a while, it takes something fantastic to change the planet. This episode is very important. It is one of the most important conversations I have ever had. Even if it hadn't been recorded, it would still be just as important. I'm happy that I was able to get Russell J. Gould in here to actually record it face-to-face. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. America in one word, freedom. We are the land of the free and the home of the brave. We could not have accomplished such a society without the freedoms fought for by our recent ancestors, people that are currently alive, our fathers, our fathers' fathers, and those who came to this land separating from Great Britain. It seems like the land of the free is becoming less free right now. It seems like the bravery has become extreme complacency on the part of the average American. If the contents of this conversation you're about to hear are true to their core, then this is the most important set of information for humans all over this planet. I highly encourage you to listen to the entire conversation. It is easy in today's world to dismiss things that don't make sense at first. Our brains have been shaped by the cadence of screens, advertisements, and now social media feeds. If we don't comprehend or appreciate something we see in the first few seconds, generally we dismiss it. Today's episode is simple and complex. The concept of divorcing the system or overwriting the system is simple. The means to get there and how that could even work, now that is complex and it requires longer focus. So listen up. I suppose if you're a part of my audience, you've probably determined by now that life is not always what it seems. In fact, is indeed stranger than fiction oftentimes. I have vetted as much of this man's testimony as I can in the short time since our recording. As I discover new information, I will update this recording. I hope you take it upon yourself to do your own research as well. I'm just one guy, and if we're going to turn this ship, it's going to take all of us. So help me out. Do your own research. Please correct me where I'm wrong. Send me an email to andy at theallcast.com. And please also... Send me an email to highlight the things that you found to be true and accurate. Those are just as important as things that are potentially wrong. After all, the spirit of an American is not to follow blindly, but to make courageous and bold choices based on knowledge, principles, purpose, and morals. Remember to like, follow, subscribe, and uh, leave me a review. Send me some feedback, give me your thoughts, and stick around after this episode for a debrief of this content. Enjoy the show. There we go. Okay, you can hear me okay? Oh, excellent. Awesome. Whoa. Perfect. So, yeah, so during the pandemic, I was um, I was working for a trucking company, working on diesel trucks and stuff, and then all that stuff happened, and I kind of, I saw through it, um, but then my son's mom, we were together at the time, and she found a... A position in Prescott Valley for my job and it's actually like two positions down from me so oh, okay. I, I applied for it and my boss was like you're gonna take a huge pay cut so they ended up making a position for my current um, job so what exactly do you do on diesel trucks so the preventive maintenance repairs stuff like that so yeah. I keep them DOT compliant for running commercial interstate okay yeah yeah so basic mechanic stuff it's, I, it's pretty simple. I only own older vehicles and so I drive 7.3 liter diesels yeah that's that's it you know it's not the it's not like the the really powerful six fours or six sevens but yeah. but I like them and so I have older trucks, even though there was a time in the quantum world where I was infiltrated by the Mossad, the CIA, the Jesuits, the Knights Templars, Israeli scientists, because of my scientific, you know, prowess of being able to take simple ore and, and make copious amounts of metal out of it. I, 
And I attracted those people because of the court marshalings and the things I was doing. And so, yeah, so you was, were already on the radar. I was. Oh yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the, when I took over, when I took over the world banking system, the IMF put a team on me for ten years that did a background study on me on everything that I developed because I restructured the financial systems, putting the wealth back into the people, taking the power away from the banking systems. Oh yeah, they were they were on top of me. So Two, how does how does 2000s. that wealth how does that wealth exist when you take it from the banking system and put it back in the well, people? Well the the fiction is attacking fiction right now. What that means is the fiction is undermining their own system to set up a two tier system where they have the the normal people like us and then they have the runaway society. And I mean Literally, the one runaway society, those people live in a different world, right? I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a couple of people in that world, and, you know, they have no um, empathy and no conscience for what they're doing to our society, our family, our loved ones. Yeah. And I have those conversations with them, but they don't. we don't get a chance to get intimate and go there too often because there's so many um, handlers around them. Right. Yeah. And so that's a always a problem is how to get them away from their handlers and how to get them offline, so to speak. To right. You yeah. can't, can't to, get them alone in a room to fe- to see what they really think and feel about something. Yeah. To have yeah. a real personable conversation. Mm-hmm. And so that's always been the challenge is how do you take um, someone that has been so privileged and get them away from their privilege or their, you know, their their wealth because mm-hmm. I mean they have butlers they, everything is so you know flush for them that they they don't they have no concept of doing laundry right they have yeah. they're just the day to day things is they're they they lack those skill sets they've never been in a fight where they've had to pick themselves off the ground mm-hmm. and, and 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 stand their ground against all odds they don't they don't have any grasp of what the feelings are of that they honor it and respect it. But they don't have any real tie to it, so they don't know what the average person is going through in the day-to-day struggle. Yeah, so of, it's hard to empathize with. It's, it's hard to people. yeah, and so they don't. Yeah, and so it's so compartmentalized. I got a video from one a friend of mine, and uh, this weekend, and I mean, I mean, if you saw the video and saw how flush it was, you'd be like, "Whoa, these people are literally." I mean, they're flying in on their own helicopters. I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's a definite bizarro world that. You know, as they've taken and sucked their wealth out and established and diversified and bought all their portfolios for all their lands or all their ships or all the things that they're involved with, they lose they, the, the average person. They just sucked all the because they've got the tariffs so high. And I mean, they've got the shipping war down to such a science. And it is a shipping war that we find ourselves in. And that's what I did was I, I rerouted the ship's channels, which is like uh, like somebody being able to move cargo into your house here. I rerouted all that and put the power back into the people. So the, for I, the, I for think the, the major part that I don't understand is that it's it's all based off of maritime and admiralty law. Yeah, and so this is where the concept of studying how one foot on the sea and one foot on the land, you've heard me say these statements. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where those concepts come into place is admiralty is more of a being a, a captain, right? A, what we call, I spent a lot of time with U.S. Military Marine Corps uh, dealing with their shipping commissioners and fielding questions from their master sergeants about the, the protocols of moving um, sequestering goods and, and acquisition and stuff and moving soldiers. Mm-hmm. Well, the same thing holds true with the ship's captain. He's in charge of the manifest, which are the goods aboard the ship. And those goods are, um, in most cases, they've made the, through the birth certificate system, made us chattel to the, as goods. Yeah. And, and, and so what I did is I created the claim, of the claim of the life system where we claim our own lives and have to be accountable for what we do. And so I've built a financial system based upon where we don't have to be in that runaway society. So let's connect those two. For the people that don't know what you've done or haven't seen your videos or things like that. So yes, looking through um, the, the, the frequently asked questions on your website, I came across one that really stood out to me that, that helped connect some dots. And that's in, um, when the birth certificate 
a system was actually created. The country was in debt yes. and we didn't have the money to pay back the debt. Therefore, somebody took it upon themselves to use birth certificates as legal tender. So legal bank notes for the Federal Reserve as value against the national debt. So us as people, if we don't claim our life back in that way, because we didn't agree to that before we were born. No. And it's been thrust upon us to have a birth certificate with a number that's a legal banknote that is actual value against the national debt of the country? Well, they've done much worse than that. So they've set up eight channels, so to speak, which they can control, can sell that bundling your birth certificate into like a sh insurance underwriting policy. And they can trade it amongst themselves 24 hours a day. So they've made so, and then they put a bunch of zeros <laughs> down on a computer screen somewhere and then come through their gray screens and come through their agencies and their agents that are in the banks and are at the terminal heads through Langley, mainly, right, who are, you know, are shot callers in what they call the uh, seven, gr seven grumpy old men system, which I took out, which was the protocols for entering tier one banking system protocols. And so I disqualified the grammar for the seven grumpy old men. And that's when the Department of Defense, the CIA, and the NSA pulled me off the streets to have a conversation with me about what that meant. Because I, under, I found that the protocol to slide a corporate structure was fraudulent. And I restructured that through my global postal union. And they actually traversed with me in Bern, Switzerland on June 18th, 2003. And we had a meeting about what that meant to, because I'd created the first for the first time in history of planet Earth, I'd created a new paradigm of jurisdiction called the now space. And you did that only through particular contractual grammar? Through contractual grammar and through setting up the fee freight for contract. What that means is the fee freight for your contract that most people don't comprehend is when they go to a courthouse, they file and pay a filing fee and get a file stamp on their contract. Well, the contracts worldwide were controlled by the post office because in order to go to a courthouse, you have to show your what? Your ID, your transportation contract to move you into that foreign vessel in dry dock. And what I did is I restructured that through our claim of the life system so we they could not place us into that ship's channel to issue a QSIP number on the case to monetize the so, file stamp of that paperwork. So how do you get access or authority or both to restructure that system? Well, well, I was the first person in the history of mankind to come forward and realize that it was a ship's shipping war authorized by the banking systems, authorized the banking systems got their authorization from the post office for their central countries who were, were under an umbrella corporation at the UPU. And I syntaxed their charter, and I was given access, because I had studied the bankruptcies, to get into the Benjamin Franklin bank books and trace the bankruptcy back to 1775. And are those publicly available? Can anybody look at those and see that well, these bankruptcies happened? That they see the forensics of it, because, but because it's a national security issue, the general public isn't allowed in the door. So that's a problem, because the general public doesn't have the knowledge on how to walk in the door and present itself yeah because it's involved in usury and the fiction like oh you're in usury you're you're giving us no facts and you have no authorization to be here so let's go through some vocab real quick because a lot of people including myself don't know a lot of these terms so we'll go through what is usury what Us does that mean usury is means that you're participating either with knowledge or without knowledge that you're using a system the system that we're typically typically get stuck with is the the concept of showing your birth certificate to get into your elementary schools to get your social security numbers to get your driver's license see this is a usury you're using that paperwork your a ship's papers your, your your vessel papers you're using that to further yourself to transport yourself from point A to point B, enter, yeah. entering into the shipping war. Through s established systems. Through an established si former system. Right. 
because I, <laughs> I, took, I took it out worldwide for yeah. the citizens of the world in 2001 when I set up the Global Postal Union and set up the quantum banking system. Where I made the wrong is I had a business partner who was a counsel for the bad guys. And in that, you know, me not knowing, right? So I was given access and doors would open for me to like get into the world. Like how does a guy from Wyoming, <laughs> a reservation in Wyoming, Podunk, nowhere, get into the World Bank, get into the IMF, right? Get into the International Bank of Settlements, the World Court at the Hague, right? The United yeah. Nations. That's an impossible feat unless the doors were open for me, right? And so I was given knowledge at the time and I didn't... Re- well, you know, when you don't know you're hanging out with the bad guys and you're doing things for the good and you have, you know, you love the spirit of the Constitution and the, what the founders really meant, you know, not not necessarily the words, but the, the condition of mind to create a freedom for we the people, yeah. the love of the armament, our freedoms. You know, those were things that I was compelled to to take me on my journey. So you believe that the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the amendments, the way that was all written is soundly written. Well, no, but, because the grammar was fraudulent. See, when you say independence, okay. see, when I started breaking down the words, yeah. I, re- I became cognizant that I was in a trap. So when those words were written, this, were they intentionally written? Don't know. It wasn't there. See, this is this, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But yeah. you look at the history lines and the storylines of why they were doing this, right? They're separating from, from a, an oppressor being England, who was, who was suppressing their uh, concepts of faith, their uh, ideologies of having their arms, their, you know, their freedoms of, the, of who they were. And they tried to separate from that. And you've got to comprehend that if the bad guys are smart, which they were, Right. And if you look at, you know, how they set up taxation and all the things on a global level, the things they chart, you know, f- you know, follow the British crown did uh, back coming from, you know, you could chase it all the way back to Babylon, the Sumerians, the Tartarians. There's a, there's a lot of people out here with a lot of different theologies on how that came about. But when I got into studying the prefixes of words I became cognizant that that paperwork was somehow, for whatever reason, I don't know, written in a negative content. And so I restructured that and I, you know, I was given access to the books of the bankruptcies uh, through the Benjamin Franklin Post Office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it gave me a different storyline of what actually happened in 1776. Right, because I had different access. You know, I was given access to, if you watch the movie National Treasure, and you see yeah. Nicolas Cage, and he's up there, and he pulls back the brick and pops out some glasses. Yeah, I've actually put those glasses on. Right, oh, yeah. I, those are that's an actual thing. No yeah. way. Oh yeah, if you if, if you <laughs> go if you go to Liberty Hall, you go kitty corner across Liberty Hall, and you know the paces, and you know the books, and you are with the right person in that secret society. That door opens for you, and I've actually looked through those glasses 100%. Which secret society is that? Now, that would be the secret society of the Illuminati. Okay. Yeah. Is that yeah. the same as the Masons? Well, the Masons have their symbolisms on the brick, yes. But that's, you got to remember, the Masons is just a very new concept to the world, right? It's maybe 120, 200 years old. That they, those are stolen concepts from different doctrines. Like from the Knights Templar? Uh, no, the way that's stolen as well. So you've got to take this thing way back, right? So you got to go back into the Sumerians and the, some of the text back then to see how some of these societies, and some of this, um, they would call it esoteric knowledge or yeah. whatever they would call it, right? Yeah. That, where that came from. And when you study some of the concepts of things like alchemical weddings or some of the, those paradigms with celestial space cognition right. and, and tie it all into what they were doing, they were working on setting up paradigms to open up gates to bring in, you know, bad things so like spiritual gates and spiritual gates yeah. okay oh yeah absolutely absolutely so okay. that and that's what the ley lines and some of the things that the that in the internet global banking these are the, the things that i now have the command on this is what gives me a very unique that's why i was able to get into the vatican and the places because i had knowledge and sat down with the catholic cardinals the school of cardinals and they grilled me for 72 hours on some of these things and they couldn't believe i knew all this stuff i'm like i don't know just 
it's in my mind. It just rattles off. Right? Yeah. It just goes on and on for hours and hours, days and days. So with, um, so we talked about usury a little bit with parse syntax grammar. Yes. Um, two questions about that. First of all, how do you define that? What is parse syntax grammar? Well, so parse is breaking down words and finding the root word of the, where it came from. Looking at the prefixes and the past tense suffixes, and the past tense suffixes are like an ed at the end of the world, like united. Yeah. Right? Ed moves you into the past. So does united have now time jurisdiction? No. Because as, as in, for people who don't understand what that means, is does that apply now? right now? No. You're united, but united, ed, the suffix means to move you into a past tense scenario. So it moves you out to the out of the quantum of the now. Now the quantum is a breaking down of the quanta, which is the pluralisms that allowed everything to come to its least common denominator point to come to a conclusion about what the fact is now. And we're seeing that in the court systems now where the judges are following the protocol, doing a very good job. I trained them very well globally, where they're saying nobody's presenting any facts here. We can this is false and misleading. And so they're they're throwing out good people that probably have good volition to fix society. They're throwing out their lawsuits right and left under, well, you're not bringing any facts here. And everybody's confused because the judge is saying, well, in my court, I do this. And he doesn't. they don't understand that they've set up foreign jurisdictions. They don't understand how the shipping war works to get into the place. And then the people that are filing the lawsuits were foolish enough to engage in usury and use file stamps on a court system that doesn't have authorization anymore. So it's a sad thing for me to sit back and watch as good people are spending their hard-earned equity to think that they're going to come to an outcome to go to a system that doesn't exist anymore. And so it's a harvesting mechanism against the people of planet Earth. It's a good financial business for those who are doing it, yeah. right? And it's unfortunately, it keeps them, the citizen in bondage and tied back to their birth certificate position mm-hmm. back to your usual original word of usury, yeah. right? And this is, this is what I've done is I've, I've moved the goalpost, so to speak, and moved off of that past tense and future tense paradigm and placed everything to accountability on volition of now where we don't have that negativity in our now space, where we're given the freedom to knit our own ties, our own communities, our own paradigms to help the planet bring not angst or division into the theater because now you can put the volition or the condition of mind on trial. So the quantum grammar allows us to finite because you can use the prepositional phrase to create the fact. The facts were done in this way in, in the now space. Now, what is the condition of thinking to create that paradigm of thought? Did it create harm? Did, they, did you try to purposely vaccinate or what did you put in the... Va- so now you can start really finding out and claiming what's been done in the now space. And this is the value of the prepositional phrase grammar is you preset the facts. Because the facts don't change. Facts are what they are. You, you can't put a fact on trial because a court can't try a fact. You can only try the condition of mind. So putting the condition of mind on trial, not the facts, mm-hmm. is where the real value of the, the correct communication parse syntax grammar is. It, it allows us to crack the harness of time and space to now put things into neutrality of zero point to articulate the facts of negativity, and now break down, hey, what's the condition of thinking that created these facts? And then some of the killing methods that we have there are so advanced that we can stop stop the spirit from jumping out of that vessel. Because when you kill someone, our body has a a resonance in it, an, an, an auric field, which has energy built into it. You know, some of my Navy SEAL friends, good guys. And then they've been in some really crazy spots where they've done some crazy things. I'm like, well, technically, you ain't a killer, bro. And here's the reason why. I says, you're having your post-traumatic stress syndrome because that energy was allowed to jump Mm -hmm. and move. And it got stuck on them or caught on them. It's allowed to move within the paradigm. And then the spirits that these people have opened now direct it towards the soldiers. And so they're not actually killing things. They're being used as pawns, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. because 
the reason why we go to war is because we're not we don't know how to communicate right so th this paradigm actually stops that spirit from jumping and so there's there's things that we build around these people that need to be taken out so that energy can't propagate and move this is termination this is the blood feud this is what what i'm when I so by show. neutralizing those systems of so-called authority, yes, you're basically bringing the sovereignty back to the individual, so that to, no so, system can have authority or control over a person. Yes, the the reason for the quantum system is that the quantum system does away with the banking systems. Yeah, right, and it brings the accountability because there's so much abundance out here for all of us, right? So I can take simple. Things that nobody, like literally, just coming here, driving into Prescott, I'm driving through trillions of dollars worth of assets that I'm looking at. As I'm and literally, I'm driving down the road, look, look at that cut, look at that cut. Because I know what that means, and I know how to, to, um, to monetize that in a way that no one has to be broke. Right? What's, a, what's an example of one of these assets you're referring to? Um, like something that you could... That, that, that I, could, I can put in a, in a condition of state... That it multiplies forever. So, how much rhodium do you need? How much gold do you need? How much? Is, so, so you, we don't have to tear up the earth to prove the perpetual energy of the value from um, one beaker of of precipitant. So, you're talking about alchemizing material. Uh, well, there's no rule. There's no rule, and and the, the NSA and the the, the Fumbling, bumbling idiots have raided my lab, so they know exactly what I'm talking about. I speak with authority. And they actually tried to charge me with being an alchemist. Is that a crime? No, there is no, that's <laughs> the funny part. There's no crime. Because it's, it's called knowledge. Right? Yeah. Once, knowledge is a whole different paradigm. You yeah. can't, what I choose to do with the knowledge is very valuable. That's where, the, that's where I feel my strength is, is because I'm doing the best I can because I'm misunderstood by society. Right, they don't comprehend because they, they haven't been down my rabbit trail. Right, I'm a, I'm the guy in a different rabbit trail than everyone else, mm -hmm. down a different rabbit hole of figuring out what makes energy move, what makes the financial systems move on a global level, and I've restructured the global stock markets. I mean, I've rewrote. I mean, you're talking about a guy with 30 years um, history of studying this of, stuff. of restructuring the admiralty and maritime concepts of banking contracts. And how the slavery of bondage has occurred to planet Earth. So the entire world's system of money, the way that it, well, the alleged system of money that currently operates, the way that the majority of people use that stuff, that is all established and functioning based off of improper parse syntax grammar. Is that correct? That is correct. So that's how you're able to go into the contract of mm. any kind of banking institution and yes. say, this is wrong and here's the correct grammar. Yes. So what is that correct parse syntax grammar even based on? It's based on closure of what is trying to be done in contract. So each sentence can be written frontwards and backwards and means the same thing. So there's no subjective interpretation on what the value of words mean. So now you can go back to the people that are engaged in contract and they say, hey, you have this joinder here and here's your performance based upon your performance. Uh, did the energy move or did you block it or did you steal it? And so this is how you weed out the theft. So where does parse syntax grammar come from in the English language? Well, it, parse is a French word. It means to break words down. Right. Communication is the, the capacity for you and I to have a intelligent comprehension of the words written down, not the spoken word, because there's so much trickery in the spoken word because two plus two doesn't equal four because you can't prove that in spoken word because I could you and I could say I can ask you a question. Hey, Andy, uh, does two plus two equal four? I would say yes. Does T-O plus T-O-O equal F-O-R-E? No. See, so what, 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 what I'm showing you here is that it has to be written down. So it's 100% phonetic Correct. based. Correct. It's based upon written word, not spoken word, because yeah. you can't prove spoken word because it's subjective interpretation on your perspective of knowledge based upon your experiences, what you know based upon what you witness. And it's only your ability to witness that you can have comprehension of something being done. 
I'm going to need to re-listen to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so how did parse syntax grammar in English originate? Where did the <laughs> language, the, the structuring come from? that you're referring to that overwrites these fr- we these d- banking d- uh, systems my, contracts? My, great question. So my ex-partner and I, David Eiffel Colin Miller, who is dead, and he was a bad guy, right? And if you watch his videos, he's very articulate. I'm here to educate the top 1% of the 1% of the world. And I'd be looking at him, I'm like, well, that's... That's not where I live. That's not. That's not my space. Yeah, I'm friends with my society. I'm friends with my community. I've, I, I love my hunting and fishing and playing basketball and, and hanging out with my friends and I like to dance and I like to hang, yeah I like to hang out, right? So that to me that never computed, and as it got further down the road, as he failed in his performances to comply with contract, he locked himself away from the his, the systems that we were building. So he weeded himself out through natural selection of his choice to not comply with contracts that he engaged in. So the federal government, uh, because I was involved in the largest court-martialing in the history of planet Earth, uh, the court-martialing of the U.S. Pentagon from December December 12, 2012, all the way through uh, this now space, um, the... Federal government saw what was going on, the U.S. Marshal Service, and they were like, you know, because they kept telling me, because, you know, you're talking to a guy here that's been in a lot of battles, right? I've been in the courtrooms more than anybody you know, anybody you see on TV. That's all BS. You're talking to the man for a fact, hmm. right? And they know it, right? I've, tra- I've trained them. And like, it's kind of like training a dog. You had to, you had to show them. And do yeah, it again, yeah, and, yeah, again. Yeah, and again, and yeah. the, and then they got it right. The U.S. Marshal Service and the federal judicial system, the DOJ, one of their main complaints was David was a habitual liar, couldn't tell the truth, couldn't do what he said, didn't do what he said. And so, when I became chief judge at the U.S. Supreme Court in October of 2004, the U.S. Marshal Service pulled me off to the side and they said, "Hey, Russell," and I said, "We we got videos out here. David saying he's chief judge of the U.S. Supreme Court. He was he there?" I'm like. Well, you guys saw the videos. You think he was there? And I said, no, he wasn't there. He's full of shit. Mm -hmm. I said, he's been kicked out of the quantum system based upon shareholder terms that he agreed to, and he was moved out of the system. And so they devised up a plan, and they dropped me into the state of Michigan in 2007 on uh, trumped-up nothing charges to bring him and I into the well of the court, into the neutral position of the court, and you've got to comprehend Courtrooms are neutral worldwide, which means that it's controlled by the law of the flag because the flag regulates contract. David and I filed for the copyrights on the Title IV, Sections 1, 2, and 3 flag, and I filed for the Civil Peace flag in 2007. David was not part of that one, which was the customs flag that you see uh, a lot of organizations trying to use. They didn't ask my permission. you got to comprehend a lot of these groups out here that you see sprung up all over the place. They're very new since COVID into f- trying to figure out what's going on. So how do you file for the copyright of a flag? I filed at the U.S. Post Office, and then I walked it into the U.S. Pentagon and walked it into the Secretary of the Navy's office as a prize master and prize commissioner because they were in charge of flag etiquette for foreign vessels moving offshore. And so it came under the Secretary of Nav- Navy's office and the United Nations when I got to the United Nations in 2003, I met with 86 ambassadors who called me back. Some of them called me back, like Israel, over 26 times to have a conversation about my quantum banking system, my crypto hyphen currencies, and things for that the, I built. For the average person living in this country, I mean, you're you're hearing this stuff and you're thinking, okay, you you were able to seize the copyright of the American flag. Yeah, because the United States was coming out of bankruptcy, and I was the only person with the claim that the birth certificate system ended. And so now all you have all these people out here that are walking derelict without papers because their birth certificates, they don't have the authorization to state a claim anymore because that system, which was under the post office, vacated the Constitution in the November 7th, 2000 election when they vacated the Constitution, which were the guidelines to elect a president. They had to vacate the trustee of the consti- of the, of, of the bankruptcy. Who's the trustee? It was the president of the United States. So they had to vacate the estate of that. And, and this is all based on loan. This is all based on loan of 1775. So the trustee, so so this has been an active no, th- loan th- since they, 1775? They didn't come, they didn't appoint the president until the Treaty of Versailles, until we entered it. Well, let's go back to the very beginning, because we got, the before we're at the, before we're a country, 
you have um, what I if I remember from your videos correctly, you have Ben Franklin, mm -hmm. who is working for the French, and in order to and, and start it, and, this and, country and England, what they were doing is they were setting up the sea lanes for merchants to engage in commerce because everything was commercial venture. And so free, free venture capitalists were running around the world saying, hey, we got goods, we need to move them. This is England and France trying it, to do this? Everybody, all kinds of nations, okay. right? Not just the U.S., but China. I mean, every nation was a, a seafaring position because they were trading, tr exchanging their goods. Some countries could do grow one thing, another country who didn't, supply and demand, they wanted things, and they would engage in trade. And so this is what they were doing, was setting up the nautical routes mm -hmm. to set up ports to bring in goods. Benjamin Franklin was postmaster general also of Canada. Most people don't know that. Of Canada? Yeah, Canada came out of international bankruptcy and it ceased to exist as a corporation on April 17th, 2017. We rewrote a constitution up in Canada, filed the copyrights on that with the Canadian citizens. And that specific date, all the bonds tr transferred out of the country through the Bank of Canada to the Bank of Scotland. And the British Crown announced that their Prince Philip, who was in charge of the bankruptcy note, was going to go into retirement, would no longer be in public speaking. So all the, all the, that's how the financial transfer happened for the payout and the slide-in of the martial law system up in Canada. And Canada is a really nasty place. It's very tyrannical. Like, yeah, like, we, can, we can see that today yeah, with yeah. Trudeau and all that he, stuff he's doing. He's for, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the Canadian citizens um, are very kind and they don't have what we have been given here. We have good patriots here that still hold on to their armament, right? This, they are their last line of defense because ain't no one coming to help. And the first line of defense. It's the last, the first. Draw the line in the sand, grow it set, and, and stand your ground. Yeah. And, 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 and come together as communities because this is, and that's where the quantum grammar comes into place. To set up communities to where we move outside the jurisdictional guidelines of the fraudulent system. But back when David and I came to court under the law of the flag, because this is very crucial, the clerk of court had, because she works for the post office, and the post office works for the UPU out of Switzerland. So she literally had all of David and my treaties on her desk stacked up because we were ship owners of the neutral our, we claim the land of our, our land to be in the now space of the courtroom during time of contract. And the land you're referring to is what? The courtrooms worldwide. Okay, because they're neutral. Because they're neutral. If you're divorced here in Prescott and you and your wife show up in Hong Kong, are you still divorced? Wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you are, right? Because huh. the, there's a file stamp on there, otherwise known as the post office, the new world order, making sure that there's a world order to make sure that there's world order, right? So now wow. you, yeah. okay. so I, now see, you yeah. I see where you're going. Yeah. So what did Ben Franklin do to get a loan to yeah. start the what corporation of the no, United States rather than a country? Well, no, he set up the post office in, in the in the in Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, yeah in Pennsylvania. And he also set up borrowing money because he needed to move delegates into who's gonna pay who's gonna finance this thing. So we had to set up a, a, a set up the venue. So they set the venue, Liberty Hall. And I don't, have you ever been to Liberty Hall? No. Oh, fascinating place. You need to go, but you need to go kitty corner, like right in the back. Be It would be southeast, just very kitty corner, about 50 feet. And go up the stairs there. There'd be gates there, but it, go around them gates. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get up to the top there, and you go off to the right. And you find the brick with the uh, Masonic, the compass and the and the, the Masonic symbol on there for the lodge, and pull that off and pff, flip out the glasses and take a look for yourself. Pretty wild stuff. Awesome. Yeah, pretty wild stuff. Anyway, so we get back to the the trial in Michigan, and one of the very it was a very articulated. So it was the first time a guy who was a very nasty uh, uh, attorney general or. Uh, Deputy Attorney General for um, State of Michigan, Donald Davis. First time he lost a case, right? I beat him, right? Never lost a case. And these are very arrogant people. And I'd already taken out the U.S. Supreme Court and um, was pulled off by the U.S. Marshals during that time frame, as well as the a vice admiral for the Department of Navy. He, uh, he met me in Oklahoma, and uh, they wanted to talk to me about 
having me give them orders through the U.S. Marshal Service to the Pentagon for the for the upcoming case that I was going to. And the Pentagon was so happy that I was going to be, they were going to put me, someone was going to try me out because, you know, I'd been smashing them to stop the wars and stop the nonsense in Iraq and Afghanistan when... So everything that's yeah. developed underneath the global banking financial system operates under the same improper grammar, is, is what you're saying? Yes. So any institution, federal government, all the things below yeah, it. Yeah, well, if you say if you say state of Arizona, uh-huh. of is a preposition, but it lacks the article to command the authority of the noun. So you now... Say, will you say that again? Of is a preposition, uh-huh. but it lacks the authority, but what follows a preposition an article, right, which now sets the fact, Okay. right? Yes. When you take out the article, now the preposition becomes a modifier. Modification creates change. Uh-huh. Change creates motion. Emotion creates action. And action creates verb. So can you show me the geographic location verb Arizona? No. Oh, so you've just found fraud in your own contracts, <laughs> right? So everything was placed under modification to create subjective interpretation to allow somebody else to control your world. Mm-hmm. That way they can define it for you because you could never define your fact because you could never find yourself. And if you don't know who you are, you're going to have to be locked up because you're in nonsense, otherwise known as lunacy. And that's what I got the World Bank and the IMF on was lunacy because they were using subjective interpretation under adjectives and pronouns. So I could make international mean a duck or I could change my mind and make it be a cup or I could change my mind to any theater I want because they did not claim a value because there was no claim to the adjective. Same thing with the World Bank, International Bank of Settlements, United Nations. United Nations, the head of the United Nations Postal Administration actually told me flat out the United Nations is a fraudulent grammar organization with no authorization to exist. But the people of the world are stupid, Russ. So if David hyphen Win Colin Miller didn't create this language structure... He, he was part of it, yes. He was a joint partner. So if that didn't happen, then none of this would exist. Correct. So how did he create a language structure? What What is it based on? Is it based on the, the based grammar on, of the English language? It's based on a mathematical function of 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. And it's adding value under a numerical cipher to create a, a frontwards and backwards system. That's what he created. And what I created for that is I brought the quantum, the mathematics of the quantum to that situation which was an easy partnership for us because he had one aspect, I had the other, and then we just joined. And first thing we protocol we looked at is, hey, what sets up a country? Well, of course, the flag, right? Because if you don't have a flag, you can't set up a venue. And right. so, we, we, so we went for the flag. So what he established was a, a parallel? No, he didn't know about parallel. I don't know what you th- mean by parallel well, he, in this instance. Yeah, 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 to yeah. he didn't know about anything about spatial cognition. What he knew about was math. T- t- took a prepositional phrase to make a noun. And he was a great mathematician. He owns a lot of po- copyrights and a lot of polymer technology for plastics. So he reoriented the entire English language based on mathematics? We, him and I did, yeah. We spent... Uh, okay, that's we, the part that yeah, has kind of been did, missing. We, yeah, we did about a... Th- well, I've, I'm up to about 300,000 hours study time in that right now of studying all kinds of concepts of hieroglyphics of communication skills. How do you, can you? Hmm. Well, I just went into old dictionaries all over the world and kind of pieced it together. So I had dictionaries from the 1400s, 1300s. Well, how do you match it to mathematics? I'm trying to understand. Well, we, we use the prepositional phrase. So uh-huh. what comes, just like we talked about with Arizona, with yeah. of yeah. and the article. That's how we did it. So we made everything a fact. And so we were the first people in the history of planet Earth to put facts on contracts. It had never been done before because everybody engaged in subjective interpretation. Yeah. And so grandfathered in, made the claims on everything, and are the authors and creators and first architects of the paradigm of the quantum Communication, parse, syntax, grammar. So I'm a fan of the truth, and I'm a fan of knowledge sure. and information. So I. <laughs> so, so, and I'm not 
necessarily i'm not like an unintelligent person but i I still struggle to understand this so i i'm looking at the world and all the people in the world and the distance between the smartest and the least intelligent Mm -hmm. so if i struggle to understand this how relevant or important is this to the citizens of the world if they can't even understand this enough to believe that it's relevant to claim their own life back from that system that's a great question. Well, in the year 2001, I ran an experiment where I met a guy where his mother and father were brother and sister, and he was inbred. He had an IQ of 60, and I took him through the Jewish judicial system. We smashed out about six federal judges with a guy with an IQ of 60 that if you told them how to articulate a fact, he could go into the courtroom, and he would only do that. And he won his case, <laughs> right? And we're talking up against the, the, the judicial, United States District Courts in, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Casper, Wyoming. And so I figured if I can take a, kid, a guy, a, a man, he was a man, who was, you know, deformed and he had some serious problems, an, an IQ of 60, uh, that you could re-educate him in a way that he could become accountable for his performances and wipe out a bunch of federal judges. Hmm. So it's not necessarily, I mean, if you, took a, if you take a look now like at Palestine, right? Palestine, that here you have the average IQ is 67. So you're having a, 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 a mental health thing where the citizens are, you know, everybody's married to their first cousin for generations. In right? that part of the world? In that part of the world. That's, okay. that's a normal thing. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it really lowers the IQ. So then when you bombard them with theology... Right now, you've created a condition of state where it's just like the guy that I took through the courts with an IQ of sixty, where that they believe in it and they're going to stand behind their their you know the, what they know because it's all they know. Yeah. Right. So you, it's not about necessarily how smart they are, it's about how countable because this once you teach them about using communication in a way that they can now be culpable. For the performances that they do, yeah. now you can peer into the condition of mind and put the condition of thinking on trial to look at the paradigm of why they created these performances. And now you can start correcting. Granted, there's another several layers in the, in, the, in the chess game here where you have to clean up the food and have to clean up the environment because what goes in comes out. Yeah. right? So, so the, I'm just spe- specifically speaking about written word on contract for the performance that they've done. This is where I've honed in my skill sets to help the world. However, there's other paradigms running simultaneously where they're putting estrogen in the foods and they're doing all these things to confuse us. Mm -hmm. And so that's a whole paradigm. Now we can take the grammar of thinking and put those corporations on trial in the now space to ask them what the condition of mind is to create, you know, all this division, right? So this is, this is a way to start looking at holding accountability for corporate structures and if you clean up the top echelon first then and you take the fluoride and you take some of the estrogen and you take some of the particulates and the plastics that they're putting in our foods you take that out of what comes in Mm -hmm. so it's an input output situation here yeah right and so so it's it's not just you know i've set up the quantum banking system the quantum shipping systems the stock markets however I am smart enough to know and wise enough to know that you don't give people loaded guns if they don't know how to use them. Same thing holds true with the paradigm that I'm showing here is that, yes, this is this is one facet of a much bigger paradigm that we need to clean up collectively. And it, it has to come from the people because the big guys ain't going to do it, right? They, they're, they're disconnected from that that empathy of of, yeah. of of love and compassion yeah, and fairness. Yeah. And why would they? Yeah, they, they're, they're benefiting from the they, other people's suffering. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, we just kind of jumped into conversation. You just yeah. Gonna, hey, it's, yeah, it's funny. With with conversations like these, I said it like I write like a seven-page outline for you. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, because I heard your stuff and I'm like, okay, there's like, there's this level of understanding that I have of it and this validity that I see. And I'm like, okay, I get what he's saying, 
But how much does it matter if these people aren't operating by it or abiding by it, and yeah. if other people don't understand it or even yeah. look for this kind of information? Yeah, and and they, from my perspective, they completely comply with it when I show up in the now space. The problem that I'm having is that everybody takes off a running. Yeah. Right. Right. Because it's because they, they can't be accountable for it. Correct. So, like, Correct. like Correct. me, if I were to do this, if I were to do the claim of life and submit my paperwork and yeah. then receive. What would it be? It would be a, a signature from... An autograph. An autograph yes. from you yes. um, based that, in your on your treaty that you have established. Yeah, and that goes right into the system. They put it right into the system here in Arizona, no problems. I trained them. I, they, I, put, they put it into their system? Yeah. We, we file it in there and we, we... Are there problems? I don't see any problems. Yeah, I, 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 I built the... You got to comprehend. Globally, I took out all their authorizations to exist. Yeah. So and it either is or it is not. Right. And, but you don't hear about this stuff. Of course so not. Like, well, of, of, of course. Because yeah. of <laughs> people are being taken advantage of all over the place by that by that system. Oh, which, yes. It's a, it's a harvest system. Yeah. And so they're harvesting on people's ignorance. And I do confess that it did take a lot to study this. Dude. R- right? I, you, you it's got, a rabbit trail. You have a more, rabbit hole. more patience than me by a lot. Oh, <laughs> I am very patient. I, yeah. I, I have I have been teaching slowly for years. Rachel's really helped with bringing things along and automating things. Mm-hmm. But I've but you know the world at the top end they you they so they take what I give them, and then they say okay. So if we enter into contract over here, we don't have to do this and this and this, and then we slide everything over into here, and then David, so I'm I'm trying to undo what David was building for them, as they're taking their stuff, sliding into the quantum, not telling you to keep themselves safe from you. Mm -hmm. So kind of compartmentalizing things? Yeah, well, that way they can't be prosecuted by the general public, Mm because they're going to use facts, and they're going to tell everybody... (laughs) Screw off. Yeah. You're not using any facts here. Why, yeah. why am I going to comply? Because all my stuff's in facts. I don't have to tell you. Mm. Right? Oh, oh, wow. so, and so oh I see. Okay. So, that's so, what he was doing. That's what he was doing. He's busy working for the Rothschilds. Not cool. No, no, no. And what, I, once you figure it out, you know, I had to knock him out. I had to knock him out in, the, in front of the fumbling, bumbling idiots. You know him as the FBI. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. man, I've been in a lot of fists. I, I'm, take a look. I've been in some fights, right? Yeah. My mouth would get me into fights and I'd have to back up what I'm saying and that's just the facts. Yeah, that's what you mean when you say you have to have skin in the game if you're going to Yeah, yeah, hey. Do this. Yeah, if you want if you but it's gotten to a point now where they don't do that anymore, right? So the paradigm has shifted because they comprehend that more people are becoming knowledgeable and more and more people are using the system for their day-to-day functions. Not all are correct. You know, David spun up a lot of guys that are really, you know, you have MI6 making sure bad guys are moving to undermine the story. You got the CIA undermine, making sure people undermine the story. I got people in Australia undermining the story. I mean, it's just nonstop undermining me at every turn because they didn't walk in the door, do the homework for themselves. And it shows in their the outcomes of the performances of what's happening with their people. Whereas with my people, things are a little bit more, we're bringing in uh, better quality people, right? So we, we don't have the, the down and outers and the, and, the, and, the, and the people that are just a little bit uh, using it to try to get away with things. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're not, we, don't, we have a lot less of them in our paradigm than we used to. So that's a really wonderful thing. So a lot of people that are looking to be countable, looking to move their businesses into s- situations in quantum grammar, there's a lot more of that now in the last couple of years. So I'm very thankful for that. Where and, and that came with the structure of getting myself structured around. And so I owe a lot of credit there to Rachel Hyvindara Colin Prince, who definitely helped with the structure of that. And so, you know, these are things. I was busy in chemistry, right? I was busy for the last 12 years deep in chemistry and and that was a good thing but mm. that time is kind of it's there and i have access and i do it when i when i can and when the when the chance presents itself and this conditions are right and it's wonderful and the people around me are like shaking their head going how the hell did that happen what the hell is this yeah and they you know it's, it's so pretty for, wild stuff. for the average guy that's like they know about the sovereign citizen movement and stuff like that and they hear this yeah that's a, like, that's okay, a, well, but that's an oxymoron yeah was which i was gonna get into that it's an oxymoron because sovereign means power of one yes and then citizen is corporate 
corporate. Okay. Yeah. So well, it's, can you tell us? Yeah. So if, how the word citizen means is corporate. Citizen. Yes. Yeah, citizen. So if you're a citizen, you're part of a society, and the society has been set up in fiction, which is just a corporate entity through the birth certificate system. Right. Okay. And so that's how that okay, works. So and if you're a legal citizen of the United States, then you're a part of that fraudulent structure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Got it. Just because of back to that word again, user, just because of your participation mm-hmm. with how you set up your businesses, how you went and got your education, how you, I mean, how you get to, to, to your ship's papers, your driver's license, all of it is based upon the shipping war. And it goes back to, again, if you're divorced in Prescott or you're divorced in Hong Kong, it's, a, it's not just here. It's a global phenomenon that has happened. And so now they want to get, trying to get away from that and chip everybody. Uh, and that's a whole nother conversation of really craziness. And, you know, from my perspective, it's much different because I know the people that finance Elon Musk, right? He's not a rich guy. People yeah. behind him are rich, right? right? So if people have misconceptions about, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> ask him how it worked when he built Starlink. Did they steal it from you, bro? Mm-hmm. Right? So, you, so it's, it wasn't that they stole it from him. It was by design. Yeah. Right. So th- these are things you have to really consider. He's just a front man for people that are convinced that they want to chip you. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to them on the phone. They've tried to hire me. They are convinced that they want to chip you. That's kind of that's Great. separate but similar to Neuralink. Neur- Neuralink. Yeah, St- Starlink, Neuralink. Yeah. All of it is the same. Yeah, because yeah. I know from talking to a woman who is a part of the uh, Luciferian Brotherhood cult system that uh, she knows Elon Musk and that Elon apparently was in that as a child. That's her testimony. And she talks about the ley lines and the spiritual gates. And oh, yeah. she describes that Starlink, what Starlink is doing is that it's it's setting up these networks in all these different places to move the energy to create... Uh, the world wars. To create energetic points. Yes. And crisscrossing energetic points through that... This is where through those frequencies. This is where to open the spiritual gates. This is where I took out their ability to do that at the Vatican, the NSA, and Greenwich, under fraudulent grammar, and became a key master of that, and took it to a chemical lever level of key master, key holder, and some of the things I did there, pretty classified stuff, and set up a galactic postal corporation as well. But, you know, I can only give so much out because every time yeah. I say something, somebody's stealing all my concepts and trying to say they did it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So and so, so how does how does that prevent them from opening spiritual gates through well, things it, like it, frequency? It doesn't. You, this is where you okay. have to catch them and you have to kill them correctly. Okay. Right? And what's the correct way to kill someone? Uh, I'm not going to say that stuff on air. Right but, on. But, but there's definite techniques cool. dealing with frequency frequency sequestering right because we're talking about the energy stored in the body earlier and how it disperses when yeah and it's it's separated from the body yeah and if if you study some of stephen greer's work and some of the work that some of these guys do under you know conscious catching and you know they've done a lot of studies on this they they're they got it down to a science right so so these are also some of the things that we're, we're up against as a society as well yeah the good news is, is they've identified themselves, that we know who they are. The bad news is... Who's the they? What, what? It would be, be the people opening the gates, okay. the people doing these bad things to us. They've identified themselves, but n- nobody's went and did anything about yeah, it. People fear for what it's going to mean for their own life if they take action against something Cor- so large. Correct. Yeah. And, it, and, and that's where, you know, you have to really think about some of the concepts of the founding fathers when they were talking about, you know, the blood of tyrants and some of these functions. Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, some of these functions, they they really had a grasp on what they were thinking and some of the things that they said or, or theoretically said, I don't, you know, I wasn't there, but it's what they document in their historical concepts. Um, from time to time, the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants. And this is the problem that we're having, is that no one's actually throwing skin in the game. And so you have, unfortunately, society that is being hurt. And if you look at our borderless country, and you look at the things that are happening here, there's not been one general or his followers that have done one thing about it. I'm one guy with concept to keep people safe from consequences, but 
those are not my skill sets, right? I have different skill sets. Yeah. And so I'm watching and waiting and I'm seeing nothing. So what we can do is manifest that 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 negativity isn't going to come into our now space. But it's going to be more and more difficult because of like you were talking about these gates and these energetic neural links and the things that they're doing. It's dangerous times, but yeah. it's also wonderful times. And I'm seeing, I'm, I'm not seeing that energy on mankind and I'm seeing people step up somewhere and I'm in, in, in the near now space yeah. and, 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 and doing something about it. And, but you're correct, Andy, when you say that they're concerned about the consequences Hopefully they can see my system that I've built as a separation from those consequences and enough good uh, women and men um, come to the to the aid of their fellow mankind because it's going to take a concerted effort and we're up against a lot because the second you do, you know, the agencies come out, you know what you're up against. I remember I was uh, selling uh, precious metals platinum. I was making a run on the platinum markets in 2013 and uh, 2012, and they had a, a big scare down on our borders that ISIS was training down there and coming through. And unbeknownst to me, I had all these fumbling, bumbling idiots buying my medals, and we're sitting around having some beers, and they're in my lab, and we're, you know, making medals, and we're just, ch- just chilling for like days and days and days. And they were asking me about it. I was like, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, if, if that's true, I says, I know the American people are pussies. I said, so I'm going to have to... F- Get me a, get me a damn, get me some body armor, I guess, and I'm gonna have to find a few guys to go down. So, something's got, and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And I, I think Americans are a few things: complacent, number one, and yeah. uh, if they're aware, then they're afraid. And it's, a, and you know what? And I'm gonna be honest with you: the judicial system is a scary thing. And uh, they have beat the living fuck out of me. And I'm just, I'm a little guy. And I'm, if I told you I've been thrown through a lot of bars and batoned and wanded and maced and tasered and pummeled yeah. to a pile of nothingness, you can absolutely count on it. But I picked myself up. I didn't get angry. And I stayed true to the course of the conviction that I had in my heart. And uh, it, I literally have sacrificed everything that I've loved. I've, I've literally sacrificed everything that I've, um, my body. And, uh, you know, I went in one trial, I went from 186 pounds. I used to be a pretty swell guy down to 102 pounds because I went without food for 70 days. And that's a, if you've ever been without food for a long period of time, I sympathize with you because that's probably one of the most humbling thing is when your body is eating itself and you lose control of your bodily functions because they didn't have jurisdiction over me so they couldn't stick IVs in me, right? They were they were staying in their jurisdiction and I was staying in mine. And uh, it was, it was uh, to be without food, um, so, so it's tough. Claiming, claiming one's life back doesn't necessarily mean that their path is going to be easier. No, well, well, it is easier now compared to what it was back then. Because of the conditioning of where people are at. People are looking and searching for change right now, and they're looking for something solid. I have built something solid over the last 30 years. You know, it's misunderstood. It's misused. And, you know, if you'll notice, Andy, you don't see me on a lot of podcast shows, right? No. <laughs> they, they got me shut down, right, yeah. from, from the clowns at Patriot Street Fighter or wherever, right? All these promises, all this and that, just all BS. I don't give it much thought because they're the ones that work for the supposed people, that yeah. that that you know are doing this to us or unbeknownst to them and they're you know that's that's I, that's I okay think, that's i think okay. most of them just don't know and well you know, a, lo- that's, a lot of them do so we have teams behind I'm, us that have educated a lot of the top podcasters and so when they like they'll go to throw me on and like an hour before they'll cancel Huh. So that's a that's a normal, and I don't I don't lose sleep over it anymore. I'm like, oh, you're undermining the, the national security of our country. That's, yeah, that's on you. Right. That's not on me. I did what I said. Oh yeah, you don't have the security clearance. What the fuck? You can't walk in the door yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can walk in the door and I can walk back home. Mm-hmm. And ain't a damn thing 
any fucking person can do about it. Mm. And I can do whatever I want when I get there. That's a fact. Mm. Those are facts. Now, people may not like that. And it doesn't mean that you won't suffer repercussions in that space. Yo. From or, people that don't know or don't care. Well, luckily, Andy, now I can afford to have people come with me. And if yeah. I feel like fucking someone up, I'll fuck them up. Yeah. Nothing personal. Oh, yeah. And I live by the blood feud, which means I'm going to go everywhere in the blood, in their blood, and go find them. And people may not like that side of me, right? That's a different side. What is the blood feud? That's a blood feud where... Their generations are wiped off the earth simultaneously for their actions. Whose? Whoever's the bad guy. Hmm. So their wealth can't move from that which they've stolen and harvested for mankind. You're referring to specific families? Generation or specific They know who they are. Yeah. We've already they've already been in my now space. We've already had these conversations. They already know what's up. Would this be the uh Sorry about that. My phone ran ran. Oh, no, you're good. No worries. No worries. And if you got to take it, we can. No, 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 definitely. definitely. No, 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 no. They know, those families know who they are. They they know what I'm about. They know what I've sacrificed. Mm -hmm. They they know more about me than all of you. If I guess correctly, will you tell me whether or not I'm right? (laughs) (laughs) Let's just say that their ability to have ceremonial functions. I took from them like little spoiled children, and they didn't see it coming. Do you have an example of one of these ceremonial functions? Hallmarking medals. What is hallmarking a medal? That would be meaning putting words on medals. Like engraving? Engraving. Yeah, that's called seniorage. And I took that capacity from them. That's one sample. There's many others. I'm just going to keep it secular at this point right on i understand um so if the average guy goes claims his life back driving around we talked about this a little bit um gets pulled over and doesn't have their id because it's a fraudulent id so they can't claim that they are that person if the entire system that creates that id is fraudulent what do you do? Because cops so, probably don't know. No, no, no. They're, they're, so here, we do something a little bit different. We don't bash the system. We join the system and stop and correct. So we take our I claims of the life and we file it with the departments of transportation, with the state departments, and we reauthorize our life as a fact. So when, when they pull us over, they have a, a everybody's allowed dual citizenship. Right. So now you're sitting there in a dual citizenship and the fact has jurisdiction over the fiction because he can prove it. Yeah. But you have to display good volition and you don't be a dick to the cops. Right. Right. Be, be cool. Look, some are dirty. Some aren't dirty. That Those are facts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Those are facts. That's for sure. But give before you're judgmental of a sheriff or a cop, give them the benefit of the doubt. So consider where they're at. Right? They're trying to make a living. They're trying to survive. They're upset about the world. They're stuck in red tape policies mm-hmm. that they can't get out of. By filing with the DOTs and the different agencies of their usuries for papers or credentials, we are setting up a neutral port during times of martial law. So it's a neutral. You're coming in more of an, as a neutral, as a non-combatant in a world of strife and division. So we take a much more different approach on fairness to the officer as well as fairness to yourself to create a platform based upon your knowledge in the theater because everything's knowledge-based, right? Every, so people come to our confabs or our workshops and they get the necessary knowledge and they get pulled over. And, you know, we've, we had guys up here, uh, uh, Scott, I don't know guy up here and uh, he gets pulled over and he'd filed his claim of the life and what's well, the first thing you have a Pike County ask him what, what is this are you, you're, are you a sovereign citizen and Scott's like no man that's an oxymoron oh great you're not a sovereign citizen no, yeah. per, per, you know perfect <laughs> you know and so and so people you have to have cooth and grace and be kind to people so we have a different message for those that are out using our system don't be angry be nice. Be kind. 
give full closure, have, be truthful, be honest with them. They can get into their computer systems. You know, I rewrote, restructured and rewrote Interpol's constitution over in Lyon, France, and had a meeting, face-to-face meeting with the head of Interpol, as well as the head deputy director of the United States uh, for Interpol in France on June 12, 2003, where Interpol is part of the networking system of the seven grumpy old men who set up the computer programming for what they see on their computer screens globally. So there's a system in place, and 99% of the time, if you are fair and you're not doing something that is a public safety hazard, right? You're not drinking and driving or you're not doing, acting like a clown out here. Uh, you're let go, hmm. right? If they stop and correct, oh, we don't understand this, but we don't want the problems. Hey, please be accountable for, you know, it's about being accountable. It's not about getting away with something. It's about being accountable and fair with people. So we have a little bit different style. We're not out here driving without their license plates. We're not doing any of that. We stopped and corrected, and we have our, our car titles, and we're postmasters on the contracts. We're always in a sh- position of being a postmaster as a neutral during time, a war theater. And the war theater is occurring in every state because mm-hmm. in every state, on top of every state flag, is a spire and what's up on top of the flag standard sets the jurisdiction for the theater. So what that means is it suspends state constitutions because the spires on top of the state flag, which means they're in a state of war, right? So you have to comprehend where you're at in time and space or you're going to get lost, hmm. right? And so you, you, those are some of the conversations that you can have with the police officers or the sheriffs out in the theater if you do get pulled over, right? More of an educational yeah, position, right? Exactly. More of a neutral position, not being a dick, not being this or that, but just flat out, hey, cool. Yeah, yeah, hey, I filed my claim of the life, blah, blah. You know, you have your claim of the life there. We have an oath there. I mean, there's there's a number of things that we do to set up a safety network so that those that have claims of life are not getting harvested. Yeah. So what about judges? How many judges know that they're in neutral ground or that that what they're doing is fraudulent? Uh, well, yes. It, in the federal judicial system, when you get through federal judicial school and become a federal judge, you get a hat. And the hat says, if no one's talking, everyone's walking, which means the op- opposite. Get them talking so they don't walk. It's a collection agency, right? And the U.S. Marshal Service and the Federal Bureau of Prisons will tell you, hey, Russ, these are some snitching bitches out here. These are some pussies. <laughs> so, 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 so it's a, yeah, they, they know what's up, right? If they get on their judge's Lexus and they do the necessary homework and they study uh, in the federal level, they study Federal Rules Civil Procedure 44.1, which is he court, not jury, which is an adverb verb s- statement. And uh, those that have watched my videos, I was working with a guy in 2000, no, I apologize, in 1997 out of the uh, Federal Judge Institute for Internal Affairs named Alfred Manin. So I was given secrets. I was getting secrets. you got to comprehend the federal judicial system. I made them, but they made me, right? I gave them what they're supposed to do, and they do it, and they're doing a great job harvesting the people. It's fabulous, right? No one's using facts. You all get harvested, right? Right. That's just how it is because no one has proved that they're accountable for their actions. Unfortunately, the bad guys are using this, not telling the general public, not telling society. Yeah. And this, you know, these were the battles that I was fighting back when I was dealing with the IMF agents and all the things back in 2001, right? So this, these are things that have been going on a long time, and I, I have sat down with most of the families that own the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And uh, those conversations were pretty classified because a lot of the technologies, you know, I'm not going to undermine them. And I, they, they don't mind me because I don't steal from them, hmm. right? I create my own wealth. I figured out how, Yeah. right? Pretty tricky thing to do, by the way. Yeah, because yeah, I was infiltrated by a lot of scientists from Mossad, Jesuits, nice Templars, you know. So are all all judges, right. you, you mentioned federal judges know this stuff. Oh, yes. Are all judges not federal judges? They're state-level judges? No, well, what well, well, everything's federal because from your local city court, what do they ask you for? 
They ask you for Federal Reserve notes for money. So everything is classified under federal, under martial law. And they're just, the lower levels are a little bit more difficult because the education's not as high. Okay. So you have to go slower and you have to really re educate. Every single judge that I was dealing with back in 1995 to 2000 is either a state appeals court judge or federal appeals court judge now. And those were, and all attorneys in all court cases are also state and federal attorneys, right? Or judges right now in every jurisdiction that I'd been in because I gave them the secrets on what it took to be a judge. So, well, they learned because they were watching a judge go through the courtroom. That'd be me. So it's possible that I go into a courtroom and these judges don't know what's Cor- going on and correct. I have to re-educate well, them on this stuff. Yes, you have them go to their judge's Lexus and put, put, put you up. You, know, you have to say the right things. Yeah. But, 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 but yeah, yeah. they basically you tell them to go to their judge's Lexus and look up the quantum banking system. And Russell Hyvett, J. Cohen Gold, Postmaster General, Commander-in-Chief, and Chief Judge of the United States. Chief Judge of the World Court at the Hague. So I've been a lot of places and uh, got through a lot of doors with these concepts of grammar yeah. to set up a new jurisdiction. And going back to the the one thing that's like the missing link for me is how how and why do these people abide by this cur- this new form of grammar? Well, they don't technically exist based on that form of grammar. Yeah, they're not actually there. So you, a lot of times I'd go to court and I'd be saying I'm going to speak to myself in a first person specific because I know no none of you because I know none of you exist. Now you talk about an energy move. When you disarm them from the very essence of being in a space, yes, they get a little mad at first, and they they got a little testy. But once they thought about it and really studied what was being articulated, because I've taken this to such a global level and galactic yeah. level yeah. that they can't under you can't say that I didn't walk through the doors because too many people know about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it- so it's so it's for me and for the citizens now coming in. There's such an education level that's been placed in place for the last 30 years. You've got to comprehend. I've been doing this 30 years, Andy. Mm-hmm. There's a huge education and a lot of doors oh, I've been through. I have the no doubt p- that you understand it and yeah. that the people that you've instructed understand it. Yes. But coming from the outside, oh, people yeah. that don't get the privilege to talk to you. Very difficult. Yeah. It takes a, oh. it takes so much focus and attention to try and understand oh, it. Oh yeah. Especially when you start studying prefixes to words. Yeah. Right? All of a sudden you look at yourself and most people go down to the bank and do a deposit. Right? But the prefix D E means to separate from your posit or your position. Then the bank turns around and hands you a receipt, but the prefix re means no. So they give you nothing back, which now gives a third party access to your account because you can't prove you had funds there. Which is why they can loan it out at their own will. Correct. Everything is semantics. Everything is communication and our ability to control our words. And once you comprehend that you are in a shipping communication war and you look at the math functions of being in the quantum of the now space, well, it's a no-brainer. Right, right. Why would you want to have use past tense suffixes? Why would you want to move yourself out of time and space? So why do these shipping entities or nations or whoever it is that's shipping goods, why do they abide by admiralty or maritime law? It's it's how they con- it's, it's how they control the directionals of the goods. To who gets what, how they cut off what. Well, it's like the off. Geneva Convention, right? Yeah, I rewrote that. Nations at war, Yeah, they abide by this convention. Like, they, we're going to kill you, but we're only going to do it in certain ways. Hey, I, I got like, a question for you guys. You've been in the military. Tell me, what rules are there in a fight? There ain't none. The See? only rule in the fight is win the fight. When, when it really comes down to when it. When it comes down to it, it is your will being forced. How do you control your willpower? Do you give up? Can you pick yourself off the ground? Do you fight at all odds? But to me, it comes down to what are the principles on which you choose to fight? Mm -hmm. Are you using a principle based upon your capacity to get full closure to put you into the theater of a fight? Because fighting and war is the last resort when communication barriers have broken down. Right. So this is where the math interface where we can come in or I can come in and put needs on the table of nations of people and quantize them to bring fairness. So everybody gets what they want, because it's not a money thing anymore, because I can give them whatever they want. Right. How much wealth do you need? How much is enough? Right. How much. But 
You don't want to give it to the governments. Right. You want to give it to the people. Yeah. Right. The hell with them governments. They're not doing a damn thing to help yeah. the people. The hell with them Congress members. They ain't doing. It. U.S. Congress has no authorization in the military court marshalling of the U.S. Pentagon. I filed a passing bill through the, both the House and Senate that they put their stamps on the back and filed it in the Federal Register for me, shutting down the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Congress. Is this public? Publicly yeah. available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Public available in the Federal Register. I'd have to get you the links on all that, but please do. I'll yeah. put them in the notes. Yeah, for sure. For okay. sure. For sure. I can. I got the paperwork. Do I have paperwork here on that? No, I don't. No, I don't. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that was done. Yeah, because. As commander in chief and chief judge of the United States, you think I was going to let Congress pass a law against me? It was so cool. So when I went back into D.C., like I'd see like John McCain on the streets. As soon as he'd see me, he'd like, oh my God, it's Gould. He'd take off a fucking run in front of me with U.S. Secret <laughs> Service running behind him. And them little bitches at U.S. Secret Service, I have a different relationship with those little pussies. And that's between me and them. And they know what's up. If you wore an Air Force base, bitches, <laughs> they know what's up. <laughs> so it's a different, rela- diff- have different relationship. I'm trying to be nice right now to them. I, you know, I, I did go to mar largo sit down with U.S. Secret Service and Trump attorneys on August 13th, 2001. They're very compartmentalized, very dumbed down. You know, they don't. Trump's very new into the theater, and he's very compartmentalized on what the what the military gives him access to. Hmm. And so when you see that. And we see some of the games that they played against him. Like if you take the Space Force Lego label uh, uh, logo and you flip it upside down, it's the symbol of Baphomet, right? And so, so when you, Dude, I noticed that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So, so there's 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 different energies going on with these guys. Yeah. I, you know, and I'm not going to be judgmental on Trump because I never had a conversation with him. But it's but it is what it is, people. I don't. I, I. You know, and that's a whole other thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, I can't be judgmental. You know, very compartmentalized on knowledge. They were uh, his attorneys were really upset about me and being chief judge at the U.S. Supreme Court. I did two and a half hours with them and showed them all the forensics of, of me being the chief judge. And they were like, "How come we didn't know this?" I says, "Well, because we, you don't actually think I'd let there be a think there'd be a president, do you?" This is all nonsense. That ended in the year 2000. You guys are out of your freaking minds. There's no guidelines to elect a president. That's why they can slip all the machines in. That's why they can do what they can do. I says I disqualified and took out the Federal Elections Commission, filed that through the U.S. Supreme Court as chief judge. And that's yeah. available to yeah. read? Yeah, oh, I'll give you access to that for sure. It's on my website. No, some of the things are on my website. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they know what's up, you know. So yeah. I, you can't be judgmental against these people. Yeah. Uh, there are no presidential elections because of the martial law. This is all a fable, and people just have to clue themselves in. They're going to have to figure out how to toughen up and uh, handle the feds. And that's easier said than done. Yeah. I, I give you my word on that. Well, up till now, I haven't gone onto my notes at all. I have seven pages of notes, so oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, <laughs> I'm gonna go through these because I, it's possible I'll forget something. That yeah, I hey, I, talk about. Did, have you comprehended everything I've said so far? Um, I wanna... To be honest, no, but it's. I think it's because you're talking fast, and I don't have the time to process new concepts at that speed. Oh, that's the only reason. So if I go back through and listen to it slower, I'll be able to break it down. Yeah, um, yeah. You might have to do some editing and all those things. I don't know. Yeah, you know, your, your audience is your audience, and everybody's going to take and retain what they can. Exactly. And I'm not going to be judgmental against anything. But I just yeah. thank you and your audience for the chance to come on. Oh, because because I don't get the chance to come on too much anymore. You know, they they got well, me they got me froze out of the system. Well, thank you for doing it. Yeah. I, I was I was first of all like when I first saw you in there, I was so stoked. I was like, oh my god, that's him. No way. <laughs> I got to talk to this guy. So I immediately passed off my child to someone to hold <laughs> yeah. and was like, I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, you agreed to do it. So I was like, wow. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm, f- I'm fair with people. People don't comprehend me and they, you know, because of the undermining behind what I've done by the CIA, I'm not allowed out on the airways a whole lot. Yeah. So. Well, it's funny because nowadays you look at like so-called conspiracies or conspiracy theories. Yeah, but I'm not They're, a conspiracy. It's that's, facts. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> but people see the first layer of information and they either hold on to it, look deeper, or dismiss it. Mm-hmm. And most people just dismiss most things because you can't trust what you're seeing nowadays. Correct. So you don't look. You don't have any reason to look yeah, into anything. Yeah. See, this is the difference between me and what you see out here. Is I went and did everything I said. Yeah. And that's really, and, and that was the one thing. So 
In the year 2003, I was involved in a very physical case, that case that I was starved down in, and they brought in the U.S. Department of Military psychological uh, psychologist into the location to do a psyche valve on me on what I had done to the Pentagon, what I had done for the flag, and what I had done for the country. Because they're trying to understand it. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then that was the, the all three of the psychologists from the Department of Navy, which, by the way, gave me a medical record for the Department of Navy as a muster master commander-in-chief and postmaster general. Uh, they, they came to the conclusion that I was actually telling the truth, and they had followed me all around, and they had, they had pictures of me in different banks around Europe, banks at the Vatican. They had pictures of me all over the world saying, this is you. I says, yeah, that's, that's me. This is, but you actually did everything you said. I'm like, yeah. They're not used to that. Yeah. They weren't used to it. No. They, they, they weren't physically used to it. They're like, but this changes everything. I says, yeah. I says that I'm, I'm trying to help my mankind. I says, this is, I says that Iraq war and what you guys have done at nine 11, shame on those people. Shame on, and then why did we rush off? Why did the soldiers not take take a minute to decompress, study, learn about the facets of what the hell's going on, and and group regroup about hey, before we enter in and destroy people's lives and destroy our lives and and collect all the the carnage because going to war is the last resort, right? This is not. Let's communicate first. Let's open the lines of communication. And you had very nefarious people, Bush and all the people that are court-martialed, Powell and all the all the ass clowns. That's funny because yeah. if I do the the claim of life, I'll have to say Colin Powell every time I oh, say yeah. my name. Yeah, and he he <laughs> he was a bad guy. He was working with I was working with. Uh, they had uh, CIA agents on me, and the guy's name was Max Akamai. And when you read his name backward, is I am X Man, right? So I had to fucking go through all the nonsense way back then with all those CIA agents, and that was a whole thing, right? And so they were infiltrating, undermining everything I was doing. It was really, really fascinating. But one of the conversations with one of them is that Powell knows all about the quantum grammar and what you do with the flag. They all know. They said, but no one else does. He's he's passed on, hasn't he? I don't know. Colin Powell, I think he passed on. I don't know. Yeah. I, who, who who knows? I don't I don't you don't follow. I that don't stuff. follow none. Of, I don't even. Yeah, right, I follow right. a few guys and hear what they say, but it's so much negativity that I'm a counsel to turn all that shit off. So. Yeah, it's probably better for your health anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, for sure. All right, I'm all gonna right. go through some of this stuff we got here. You bet. Mm-hmm. 